Hello, hello again and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair. And this time I will try to actually remove old fungus in an old rangefinder Nikoa HC uh, and it's a maximum 2 aperture and it's a 5 cm from Nippon Kugaku Tokyo for the rangefinder. So <clears throat> let's see how the shop yet looks. Oh you can see there's something dirt on the back. Hmm. Yeah there's actually a lot it will say. <clears throat> if I take my torch and put some light through it we will see there is some well let's say a lot of fungus. So uh, it could be very interesting to actually try to remove it. It's only on the the inside of the back lens group. The front lens group actually looks fine without any tracks of anything uh, fungus. Now we need some tools. Um, yeah, rubber tools uh, from Japan Hobby Tool. The absolutely amazing for working with cameras and lenses and uh, oh hold on I am not sponsored by any company or website or everything what I do on my channel is actually paid by myself my tools my fluid my grease everything it's I'm not sponsored by any so that's just to make things clear well uh, I need a, um, we will need a 1.8 millimeter screwdriver. This is something from Vera, uh, which I like. I'm not sponsored by Vera, but uh, I use the tool which I actually like. 1.8 millimeter in this uh, case is really good for this. A good uh, pointy tweezer <coughs> and an old dentist tool from my dentist <coughs> which is really good uh, a lens blower <coughs> some cotton buds and of course we need something to put on which will be hydrogen peroxide 3% and we will also use some probably use some lighter fluid it will be SIPO extra or whatever name they have and to clean the lens element I like to use the peg pad uh, non abrasive wipes. So, <clears throat> and of course, an old compass, which I uh, find very handy for this case. Um, I'm thinking about buying some of those real um, uh, lens tools, but uh, I think those old really make the jobs very good, and I can actually modi modify them to what I want. I um, yeah let's get into it and see what we can do about it. It will be interesting. I have taken a picture before I actually disassemble it and um, yeah we can just see it <coughs> uh, when we come to the um, through the video oh yeah well, we could just see it right now, so it will be there now. And now, <clears throat> yeah, we will... Uh, I need to come into the back here to get actually into the to the uh, back lens group because I need to unscrew this retaining ring kind of and there is also a spacer in here and if we look uh, if it's possible to see yeah down here right there there is a screw that is a kind of a locking screw to this retaining ring so I need to come into that 
So how to do about that? I cannot just unscrew it, uh, or I can just I cannot just uh, take it out this way here. So what to do? Yeah, I need to take out the helicoid, which actually sit. Um, I mean, part of it sit with three screws here on the back. That's my beginning. So to make things really clear, unscrew there, there, and there. So that's clear. And actually before we do anything, set a mark here somewhere, which is in line with the uh, <coughs> with the uh, focus handle or actually the uh, oh <laughs> those sticky notes it should actually be in line with the with this part here it will say there so set the mark here all the way down to oh just close it again <clears throat> so where the arrow ends uh, I will simply straight down here that's important because that's your starting point and that's the beginning so simply unscrew those three screws <clears throat> And so, <clears throat> now, to actually get the, um, the helicoid, I mean, the, the yeah, part of the helicoid off here, um, we simply need to turn the, um, uh, where did it go? So you can see, I actually wrote a kind of a minus. So this one, this ring here, will turn a bit over one full turn uh, when it comes to when you get it off one full turn and it will come over here. It will say something like 10 o'clock <clears throat> to get it off, which I will do now. Uh, unlock the, uh, the focus handle here. And simply unscrew <coughs> you see I have my mark here which is in line with the other mark here that's my beginning and then turn it one full it will say that's fun one full revolution and when it comes off over here at 10 there and then it comes off which will be so. Now the the focusing key, which we can see in here, uh, part of the focusing system. Uh, it looks like this in here. So now we can actually uh, I can turn this, but the, it will only turn the 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 focusing well part of the focusing system and the key in here which is attached to uh, some in here you maybe can see it there and on the other side down here <coughs> so the key can actually not move it will only move that way now to get the I mean to get further into it because I need to unscrew this part on the back here so to actually uh, come into that, we need to <clears throat> unscrew two screws, which will be this one and 
this one so that's clear and we will do so they are tiny those screws so there and it's a locking screw uh, to prevent the the um, this scale or the other ring here, uh, the ring around here, from uh, actually coming loose if you move the focusing. Now, this can be, sit a bit tight, and before we actually do anything. Um, we actually need to set a mark down here somewhere. It doesn't really matter, but since I already have been into the lens and investigate what's actually happened in here, we can just set a mark something here. So we have a reference point to actually turn this ring, which will say I will hold in this part here and the other ring here will actually be unscrewed. So let's see what's happened. Next <laughs> script, kind of the script. Um, the feet scale will come off after five turns. It will say at three and a half feet. As you can see here, it's not meter because it's actually set feet here, which is an, because it's an old lens. <clears throat> now, to actually get it off, we need a cone, rubber cone here, and uh, it will say number cone number five for that purpose. <clears throat> And to, we can just try to unscrew it, uh, put it over here, and simply have a good grip here, and then, oh, a good, so it's quite almost over the scale uh, here, and then turn it. <laughs> it can sit extremely tight. I mean, it, it, when I was in the lens first, at first it sits uh, quite tight. Push. Now, since it's loose at the moment, it will say it's not that part we will move, it's the other part that we actually move. And to unscrew it, we need to unscrew it five turns from the focusing handle. <clears throat> because if you just turn the scale ring and hold in this one, you will see what happened. It moved all the way over here and you cannot get it any further. So that's why, just go back to the starting point, so there. and. Simple hold to this, um, the meter, I mean the scale, feet scale, and turn the other five turns. One. Two. And three. Four. And it will come off here. So, and it's free. So this is how it looks inside. So the inner, that's actually part of the helicoid here. <clears throat> so now you can see the, the key here which we also can take off is sit in the two notches here, one there and there. 
it doesn't really matter where it sits uh, because well it can sit here or it can sit over here doesn't matter so and um, that was actually that I cannot take this off here and I don't need to take it off of course if one wants to do it uh, well but at the moment we cannot take it off so now I need to press the uh, the tube here as far as it can come towards the front of the lens and then we have the oh um, this screw that's the main thing we need to do and um, <clears throat> Before we do it, set a mark somewhere here uh, before unscrewing this retaining ring. Because it's, it's really good to have uh, uh, when you, I mean, before you disassemble it. Because it will be easy to uh, actually have the mark um, when you assemble the, the parts here again <clears throat> this ring will turn five and a quarter and it will say refer reference to the screw itself <clears throat> and it will come off at nine o'clock so let's see so we simply unscrew the screw here It's not a difficult lens to come into, but uh, hmm, it's good to have some reference point. Now, we need a cone to unscrew this. And since I have my my mark here, which can be difficult to see there, I already just set it and I can just set it again. So in line with the screw. Now, then we need cone number, let's see, no, number three. It's good they have a number on these cones. So now put it on and simply unscrew. It can sit a little tight, so have a good grip on the, on the whole lens assembly. And we will turn, we will also count it will say so now it's actually free so it will say one two three four and five and then I have my mark here referred to the screw and then I will turn it a quarter and it comes off here so it's actually good to set a mark where it comes off it will say something like there so now we actually know where it should sit again there is a spacer here which has to sit correct um, it's completely flat on one side and it's kind of a angle on the other side because it has to go into this retaining ring so take care of that now then we are coming into the lens and before take it out we um, we actually need to set a mark which will be good to have so we again have the reference to the screw and simply just set a mark in here somewhere 
And for now we will use a uh, lens spinner and simply turn 16 and a quarter and it will come off at 9 o'clock something like over here refer to the screw head the, I mean the screw <laughs> um, so and again I set them up it will say something like there I already have been in there but uh, we will just do it again so now we know where it should sit and then use a lens burner so we can actually unscrew it and mm, it will say 16 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 <laughs> 9 10 11 13 14 15 16 and almost a quarter so it comes off oh what got them oh I missed one count so it will say there yeah so it is so now we are actually into the this is how it looks inside with the um, the aperture so and um, let's put it aside so now this one is the interesting stuff so we can see what's happened in here <laughs> a lot of fungus which has probably been probably been there for many many years so, uh, and it could be interesting to see what we can do about it. I haven't tried to remove anything from it, but uh, let's see if I just put a, my rubber glove over it. Oh, I can feel the uh, the scratch. I mean, the marks on the on the surface. And one thing to mention is also when you use uh, hydrogen peroxide. <coughs> It's important to take care of the ink in the edge of the lens. It's not possible to take out the lens element from the mounting here. So I will just try to put it on a kind of a stand so it's stable. And where do I have one? Hmm. Well, try to put it. Oh. <laughs> well we can just do it put it on here it'll be fine enough and let's see what's happened uh, let's see if it's actually possible to remove with lighter fluid at first just uh, try to see if we can do anything Well, <laughs> not really much. I mean, there's still a lot of tracks. Uh, so, uh, no, it's not good for that. But how about the hydrogen peroxide? What will happen then? So if I use a peg pad, uh, I just cut them in smaller size so it's more economical. Uh, to work with so if we just get the tissue here wet, wet so 
that's enough. Oh, it doesn't have to be <laughs> a lot. Uh, let's see if we can just uh, take out of the... Yeah, that's fine. So let's see what's happened, actually. And uh, hopefully <laughs> something will happen. Okay. Well. Uh -huh. Something happened. A lot, actually. <laughs> so what's the... If we can just do some after cleaning with with the lighter fluid maybe that's enough for this uh... well something really happened <laughs> very very interesting so we will just give it another go but with the hydrogen peroxide that's really interesting stuff so we just do it again just a slightly little There's no need for getting too much on it and then we do the final cleaning with lighter fluid Okay, yeah, we'll just do it again. You simply need a good cleaning here with the and there could probably also be some kind of oil film on the lens element. But actually, how does it actually look right now? Well, there is not really almost anything left <laughs> that was interesting <laughs> we'll just give it a, a last go with the lighter fluid and say I think that's fine Wow <laughs> that's just amazing you see we couldn't do anything with, with the lighter fluid and if I put a like, yeah, I also have to clean the back side of the lens <coughs> to get it uh, clear to see. But since the uh, lighter fluid couldn't do anything about it, I think it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think it's actually fine for now. So let's have a like through it. I mean, uh, there is something, but oh. but you can see it's uh, actually clear at the moment, and before you couldn't actually see anything I mean you could not see any clear uh, view on it so I think okay it works again that's amazing so <clears throat> and you probably think okay what about the the front lens group yeah we could do it and I will do it so to unscrew the front uh, lens group I will just clean the inside there's no need for doing anything else um, in my opinion so use number five to unscrew the uh, the front lens screw yeah and clean the inside and maybe someone would said what about the rest of the lens in there there could also be haze or I mean fungus yeah you're probably right 
but they all depend on what kind of fungus it is. There are many different. So I will just clean the, I mean, let's see how good or bad it is. Well, there is a kind of, uh, yeah, there may be something, but it's more on the outside. But we will, we, I can just give it a go to see how good it will be. And we need some, uh, I think I will just take lighter fluid to do the job. The lens is pretty deep, so we'll, and let's through it well it helps a lot really so I will say that's a big success to actually clean this old fellow and well I will simply just put it back in again and say hmm interesting stuff So there, and tighten it gently. And now simply put in the the back lens group, and I have my mark here. And I also set the mark outside uh, somewhere. It will say something here, so I can simply just put it on. That's the thread and simply screw it in. And then I should end up with the, um, the small lock screw that will go into the, um, to the back retaining ring. And of course I have to tighten the lens group. With my tiny modified lens spinner. <laughs> and maybe someone would say, well, you need to use the right tool, but what is actually the right tool? It all depending depend on what kind of work you will do and uh, since you actually can make a lot a lot of tool by yourself um, so and or modified some of the tool which is also a kind of a the repair work so there it gets them. So and there it sits. So now the the spacer which have to sit correct, as you probably remember. The brass side uh, have to go on first. I mean you simply put the the, the brass side here will go towards the front into the lens. And the other side was actually look like it's uh, kind of a dented uh, to make it probably make a better grip on it uh, and has to go into the over the the retaining ring and I have to find my little mark which is here and my mark when it comes off which is here and then Get it on the thread and simply screw it in. Then use uh, rubber number three and then tighten it so the hole in here is actually, I mean, so you can see there is a deeper hole to the screw. Uh, 
and it has to be tightened a lot. Uh, difficult to see. Hmm. One could also use the front, a rubber ring on the front, so have a better grip. And then have it to so it's there you probably can see so it's correct so I can simply put in the small tiny screw on the side and so there They can sometimes be a little tricky to put in and need a little adjustment, kind of, to get it correct in. It will probably need a little more. So. And then it sits there so it's ready and then the ring here can just not come out <clears throat> and now then I can put in the key uh, I can just put it so then put in the key for the focusing it has to sit on one side of the of the um, back here the key has to sit something like that and simply come on like this so it sits so now it's correct um, and then I need to put on this ring here <clears throat> it will say I have to find my 3.5 meter it will say uh, as when I begin I need to find um, on this and the handle here put on the um, the back here and simply find the the thread but also remember the key here um, so there the thread is I can simply just try to put it on and when it says click there just do it again so I put it a bit over uh, in reference to this the arm and simply move it so it says click oh have to do it great hmm. a bit more so and then simply unscrew it in but I do not have to turn the back part here it will turn the the this ring with the handlebar the I don't know what it calls actually it's kind of a retaining ring but anyway I see hope you can see the point with it because if you turn the back here you only have to it will only turn uh, until it stops uh, in the gap here so we simply continue can it be done like no I simply have to screw it in I will end up here uh, then we are almost there because I have to get the black mark here in line with the 
other mark in here which I said in the beginning and uh, you can turn this so it's free of movement and then have a um, rubber grip here put it on here and then like the the other screws uh, those two screws here this one and the other one has to sit uh, I mean sit uh, so the holes are with a full screw hole so I will simply move it until I am um, so the screw holes here are aligned and it will say something like that and hopefully it's possible to put the screws in it will say something like that mm -hmm. so no it's not yet there now it's not fully in so I need to turn it a little it can sit a little tight so we need to put it even more in mm. <laughs> come on so there I think it will be fine there and then hopefully it sits correct yeah that's fine and gently tighten them there and the other screw and so we are almost there so wow it looks really pretty so now you can see if I turn the focusing ring the key in here will also move and then I have to put in the the helicoid here which I of course also have a mark here I set in the very beginning in line with the notch here and it will become it will come on at around 10 <coughs> in reference to the focusing handle bar here we'll say something like that and then find the thread and turn it until it's all the way home and then lock here so now we find the holes uh, in the key so you can just turn the lens simply and find the three holes there then put in the screws so there and we are actually almost there so that was actually a very very interesting thing <laughs> uh, to clean a lens element with with the hydrogen peroxide I mean sometimes it would um, it has sit so long so it's probably dry I don't know but um, I know what I can see it, it, it the hydrogen peroxide does gently tighten the screws here on the back no need for over tighten those small screws 
and here we are and now we are back again and with a much cleaner lens so you can see <coughs> yeah that's great and there will be a picture in the after so you will see it after in a yeah that's all for me so hope you enjoy the content and can use the information about this old Nikola lens so that's all for me bye bye